Hey, can any one of you confirm if the screen is visible? Okay, guys. Okay, Chaitanya. Thank you. Okay, okay. Let's start. So uh, let us do a small recap once again. So yesterday uh, we as uh, we have started discussing about uh, oops object oriented programming system. Right? It is an acronym uh, which stands for object oriented programming system. Okay. So uh, before even understanding about Java oops, we need to understand about the programming paradigm. Okay. So there are many. Uh, many programming languages in the world there are many programming languages in the world but each and every programming language is following a concept of programming paradigm so we can also call it as an approach right so i was telling you that so this is a simple uh, understanding about the programming paradigm it says it's a standard way of preparing a program you can call it as a procedure right it is also called as a style of writing any computer program right or you can also call it as programming paradigm is a technique to write a program okay so on the next question the next follow-up question is why it is necessary to have a programming paradigm right so if you are uh, discovering a code you know, which uh, which is going to pass input or pass instructions to the computer if, if the computer can understand the code that is not the big deal the code that is that is being discovered should should be understood by the computer as well as by the human beings right so it is necessary to have a programming paradigm and you develop the code in such a way that it is easily understandable by the human beings as well as computers right so if uh, you know if if there is any violation in this right if there is any contract in this these are the problems that we are going to face Right, the programming languages will not become popular if if there is no programming paradigm is followed the languages will not become pro popular because we don't understand this stuff like if if the language is complicated no one is going to prefer java right so to make it simple uh, you use one of the programming paradigms right so if uh, if you're not using programming paradigms these are the consequences it is going to increase the complexity uh, readability will be decreased testing maintenance we have discussed this things yesterday and if you talk about types we have imperative programming and declarative programming under imperative programming and there are two uh, programming paradigms procedural oriented programming object oriented programming so java has adopted object oriented program right so under declarative we have functional programming and we have logical programming right the imperative programming we have discussed this is going to execute the code sequentially from top to bottom approach right so integer a integer b if you see here the data we have two data a and b right and here we are performing a mathematical operation a logical entity so this logical entity entity i mean entity is also is also uh, getting uh, stored inside another variable so we are, we are taking a variable actual variable to perform the logical operation Right. So, uh, if you uh, follow this approach, top on top to bottom approach, then it is called as what the imperative programming. So, uh, under imperative, we have procedural oriented programming. So, there is a little difference between the procedural oriented programming because here we have divided the actual data and uh, the actual logic. So, both are treated as different entities. This point you should remember. One should always treat the data and the logic as separate entities. Data and logic are separate entities. Okay, this is a typical example, right? And uh, C language is following what? C language has adopted, adopted what? Procedural oriented programming, right? So at, at last we have started understanding about the object oriented programming. This is also a paradigm, right? Whatever, whatever you build, whatever you build to a uh, a program just by using classes and objects. This kind of program approach is called as object oriented programming approach. When you say object oriented programming approach, this is nothing but what? You use only classes and objects. Right? So look at this. 
the entire program will learn based on object instructions class is a blueprint so we have discussed so many examples on top of this right so if when i open my paint screen uh, i was say uh, i was telling you about the uh, real time uh, real time analogy which is house construction for the house construction you need a planning phase and the execution phase planning is a blueprint execution is what execution is what it execution is actual work execution is actually the thing that is happening planning is what it, it is just an imagination so i can say that planning concept is also called as class and the execution concept is also called as object execution concept is also called as object so this was the example and i have just stopped here i guess okay i think the re a recap is uh, good i mean any doubts till now we will start the actual topic everyone do you have any doubts yes no okay so you must focus from here it is very important because you may get a lot of interview questions from from now onwards okay try to pay much attention here this is complete theory but this theory is very very important to understand the actual problems okay okay so uh, let me introduce one more and uh, one more analogy so that you know uh, we will be little comfortable little more comfortable about classes and objects so let me take an example like uh, for example okay yeah. so okay let me take the example as earth okay when i say earth right earth is home to all the living beings yes or no it is home to all the living beings right so let me classify let me classify the living beings according to our uh, what we call it as so let me classify the living beings according to our witnesses okay. you know you Hello. Okay, so I'm audible. Uh, there was something happened. I don't know what has exactly happened. I got disconnected. I'm not sure why it is. I'm audible. Everyone. Okay. So let me share my screen again. Please also confirm if my screen is visible. Okay. Hope my screen is visible. Right. My voice is clear. Right. okay i mean even i am not sure what is exactly happened okay let's continue okay so shall we continue okay 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 so so this is an example okay just try to focus here okay so earth earth is home to all the living beings so we have witnessed a few living beings okay so according to our cal classification earth is home to what humans it is home to what 
animals I mean, it is home to so many things so many things and it is also home to birds birds right so according to my classification earth is home to humans animals and birds right? there are so many things that we can dance you know that that we can uh, say but these are the three prominent things that i can uh, do for this example okay and again when you talk about the humans right when you when you talk about the humans humans they are going to have some properties yes or no properties so when i say properties properties are nothing but you know uh, the actual representation of a human if you want to define about a human what do you say yes humans are going to have what two hands two legs right and uh, and so on this is how the property can be defined yes or no right so when you want to describe about a human being okay you actually do the description according to the properties okay according to the uh, witness so when you say humans they are going to have two and two legs right likewise when you when you want to describe about animals animals they have properties right again when you say properties they have usually four legs right and you know yes. and birds for you know when you when you want to describe about a bird when you uh, for properties they have what two legs and two wings these were the properties okay so they do have properties along with the properties don't you think that they also have behavior right what do you say property should be there yes of course properties is mandatory and behavior is also there right behavior means walk is a behavior animals they walk right i mean humans they walk right so they eat it's a behavior right something in action is a behavior so do do this they are completely depend upon the properties yes or no right likewise animals has behavior right what is it hunt hunting again eating you can also bring the eating okay and the birds he he it's a v i o r behavior okay so we can include what flying fly is a behavior right and of course they eat they sleep you know all the common behaviors are there but these are very specific to the bird right these are very specific to the bird this is very specific to the animal even a birds can also end, okay so for every entity for every uh, what we call it as uh, in the earth if you talk about earth okay we can classify earth is home to all the living beings so according to my classification you know earth is home to humans animals and birds classification i said classification what did that say Your own type. What did it, uh, what did I just say? Classification. Classification, right? So the classification. Just remove. Just only assume the class from the classification. Okay. Just remove this. Okay. Just remove this and place it over here. the class of humans the class of humans instead of classification i'm using class the class of humans is having what properties and behaviors right it has properties and it also has what behaviors right the class of animals has properties and behaviors the class of birds has properties and behaviors right so when i when you when you talk about java class even in the java class okay the java class is going to have what properties and behaviors yes or no every java class is going to have what properties and behaviors okay so properties is the thing which we have to uh, we do the comparison with java classes for properties we call it as what data the actual data when you have any data the data should be stored in the form of variables they are called as what properties right so this two legs and two hands okay uh, they can be converted to properties this is just like a data right and the behavior in the class behavior 
is equally is equivalent to what methods right so what i'm trying to say is properties are nothing but data behaviors they are nothing but methods okay so this data and methods are bound together into a single entity called class we got the definition right the data and methods are bound together or combined together or placed inside a single entity which is called as what class so one more conclusion is for any java class if you take any java class the class is going to have two entities one is properties and the second one is behavior properties are also called as the data right methods behaviors can also be uh, is equivalent to calling it as methods right anything if you want to write any code in java the code should have a class classification class should have a name relevant name it should have for example if you're developing a calculator applic calculator application you should name the class as calculator inside that calculator is going to do what it is going to consume some data right so you have data it is going to do some operations or business uh, uh, you know business business logics business logics will be written you return those business logic in the methods it, you, you can write addition you can write subtraction you can i can write a logic for multiplication division so on making sense everyone are we good so far yes no why we are using class in java is it making sense now i want answers from everyone because uh, keep the session interactive right this is why we have a uh, this concept is called what object oriented programming this concept is called those object oriented programming and again in object oriented programming we use to we usually use classes and objects classes and objects okay so this example is giving us an idea or it is giving us an insight about the class but i want to I want to give you the insight about the object. We understood what is a class now. Class is going to have data and methods, but we need we should also need to understood we should also need to understand what is an object. Right? So let me go back to the previous example. The same example, planning execution. Uh, class is just like what? Planning. An imagination. Okay, by looking at the class, you can you can guess the output. But it is not going to consume any memory. I was telling you yesterday, if you remember. Class is not writing a class doesn't mean that the memory is consumed. Okay, only the memory gets consumed when you create the object. Writing the class is also like planning. Okay, writing the class is also like what? Planning. Okay, writing the object, writing the object and having that object executed is called as what? Execution. Making sense? This area is very, very important, guys. Just try to focus here. Uh, I mean, no, you know, I will, I will ensure that uh, this theory is going to be interesting. Pay some attention. Okay. Now let me write a small code here. Let us develop the calculator application itself. Cal, so calculator application. Calculator. So meaningful name. Since it is a calculator, we are going to develop a calculator application. Okay. I am keeping the name of the uh, the classification is calculator. So just use the class. Class calculator. Okay, class is created. It is not complete. The class is not complete because inside the class we should have what properties and the behaviors. Real time example. Even for the real time example, and if you even for the Java programming example, it is using object orientation. So data must be there and behaviors must also be there. Yes or no? okay so class data what is the data that we need let us take two numbers it is array equal to 100 integer v equal to 200 so this is what we call it as data data this data can also be called as what look at this and tell me this data can also be called as what answer it to me what is the other name for data just now i have said what is the other name for data by looking at this you can answer properties yeah properties right methods what is other name for methods behaviors making sense guys everyone 
we should get acquainted with this terminologies or else it will be it will be little confusing to focus okay just get acquainted with the technologies yeah good 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 okay let me go back here so we got data and we need what method because we are we are developing a calculator application so let us assume two behaviors one is addition second one is subtraction we need what we need addition and we need subtraction okay for addition i am taking void add integer a comma integer we forgot about this void and all you will get it in the future classes okay try to understand this is a method this method is going to uh, this is a behavior it is going to do some calculation in our case it is going to do what addition system dot out dot intel and a plus b this is one behavior this behavior is what adding two numbers i need another behavior subtracting two numbers up a minus b right so i have what i have uh, two uh, i have a data which is also called as property i have a behavior don't worry about this method okay we will uh, we will think a lot about we will discuss a lot about this especially for the methods try to understand the concept object to regression concept data and their methods okay if i run this if i simply run this in java java will throw us an error why java will throw us an error you know because in our previous classes in our first classes in java fundamentals i was telling you main method is mandatory in java you can write uh, thousand lines of course only main method will get executed right do you have any main method here everyone answer me did i prepare any main method yes no do we have main method in this program yes no main no main method is there how can we say no main method is there for the main method the syntax is fixed what is that syntax we used to we used to do right public static void main Static void string array. This is the syntax of the main method, right? So I have data, I have behaviors. Okay, so you can say, sir, uh, sir, this is a method. This is also a behavior. Of course, this is also a behavior because this is also representing a method. You can assume it like this. Since this is the uh, execution is starting from here, for a, even uh, when you take this example, we have a uh, we have a behavior like what we have we have a behavior like eat okay, and we have a behavior like uh, you can say thinking. Any behavior that uh, that will ensure that for humans brain is the main entity, right? Without brain, you know you cannot think, you cannot do all this. You can you cannot do all this. You cannot. Uh, accomplish all these things right without brain thinking just like that this is an important method which is going to accomplish accomplish all the tasks that's why main method is mandatory it is just like a brain for java okay so now you tell me guys if i run this what output will be displayed in the console okay uh, this is our test start java okay can anyone tell me what output will be displayed in the console very simple question no output in the sense blank console will be blank blank correct chaitanya what about others do you agree with chaitanya yeah yeah chaitanya i got it what about others ganesh everyone agrees with chaitanya chaitanya says no output output will be blank what about others we have uh, so many members here Amitta, Darshini yeah Jyoti and Ganesh, Teja output is going to be blank right so I was telling you there are no instructions in the main method that's why output is going to be blank now listen guys now listen okay, let me run this to check whether it is going to display the blank or not. java c space test dot java Okay, this is syntactical errors, no worries. I have to give a space between this variable and the data type. Java space test. 
So this is running a different program. I need to save this properly. List dot Java. No, it is calculated dot Java this. The name of the file should be same as the class name. So calculator dot Java. Okay, let me override this. Okay. Java e space calculator calculate of java space calculator okay output is blank okay now you, you should be wondering so we have given so many instructions here we have a method we have another method okay why the output is blank very simple the execution starts from the main method so this is just like a brain inside the brain no instructions is given no instruction is given specified inside the brain right so for example when you go to the office or when you when you go to the college okay so you already know the instructions you need to uh, enter the college right uh, from the gate from the main from the main gate okay and you know how to go to your classroom because that is how your your, your brain is wired right you cannot directly go to the principal room and sit right you cannot go to the chairman rooms and sit right it will not happen right so we know it is already wired so we, for java we need to wire we need to we need to place the instructions we need, to, we, need to, we need to give the instructions to the main method all the instructions will be given in the main method so no instructions is given that's why output is empty even though there are so many behaviors we need to activate this behavior this uh, we have a hard behavior or add method this needs to be activated we need to transfer the control to this behavior then this logic will get executed how do the how do we transfer that's that's the question right so far object creation class creation is successful it's just like what a blueprint a blueprint just like in uh, just like a plan i need to create object also in the runtime okay so what i usually do to create an object the syntax is very simple class name any variable name any user defined variable name. you can give any name any variable name any meaningful name I can say equal to new keyword. New keyword. This is the uh, this is a very important keyword. When you say new, memory gets allocated. <laughs> okay, new is very important. New. For us, new is something uh, that we are looking at for the first time. But for Java, new is something that is going to create an object, create a memory. Okay. Now get class name. That's it. This is the syntax. Okay. Let us substitute the syntax with our class. What is our class name here? Calculator. Right? Any user user variable name. What name you can give? You can give any name. Let me give Ganesh itself. Ganesh. But Ganesh is meaningful. No, it is not meaningful, right? So meaningful name is what? Object. When Ganesh name will also work, but that is not meaningful. So I am giving object. Okay. Again, what is it? new keyword so give the new itself again class name okay what is the class name calculator object is this is the object creation okay so so now now, now understand guys when the main thread is encountering this instruction okay as soon as i run the program the control will start from the main method right it is going to encounter this instruction it is going to witness this instruction as soon as it is witnessing this instruction a memory will be created in the runtime a memory will be created because it is just like when you when you when you are planning when you are when you have a plan to construct an house okay after while you construct a house you see every day you see what you see plumbers you see you see workers you know they they start arranging the bricks okay they prepare cement they mix the sand with cement so many things will be done okay the execution phase will be started day by day right Likewise, when the main thread is encountering this instruction, it will actually start the execution. Okay, now you tell me, forget, uh, let me uh, keep this code just like this. Now you tell me, how do we create object for the class A? I have a class A. Okay, I want you to create object for this. Very simple question, isn't it? So this is, I will also give you the syntax for this. This is syntax. Just substitute the syntax with the things that you see in this class. For class A, I want to create an object. 
ये वो भी नो या एक्सेक्टली हॉट्स दर्शनी गेटिंग इट्स अमिता गेटिंग इट ज्योति एस गणेश गेटिंग दिस दर्शनी समिता ज्योति एस तेजा वेता what about others okay so this is so uh, this is so yeah this is so okay now you now you create the object for this class okay now create the object for this everyone make it fast do the object creation so next time when i say when i ask you to do the object creation you should do the object creation and you should send it to me everyone create it hmm ganesh opj equal to new ganesh yeah so i think you are getting this okay so i have just done the object creation here okay this is syntax with this syntax i have done the object creation okay so object creation is not uh, you know this is not going to give you the actual output okay when i run this code let me take this code focus here guys this will this is very very important let me take the new in screen okay okay this is visible i guess okay so we know these things already i don't think we need to do the discussion here compiler will come into picture okay compiler will do what it it do, it actually checks the syntactical errors it will look for the syntactical errors and uh, we have what after compilation execution will start will be started by the jvm java virtual machine jvm okay what jvm does it is going to create a new thread main thread this main thread usually it will find the main method okay this is the from this code this is where the main method is residing right okay it will get access to this main method right after getting access to this main, access to this main method it will encounter the first instruction what first instruction says calculator we have a new keyword whenever you are seeing a new keyword it means blindly you should understand that an object is getting created in the memory the object creation is also called as what the memory allocation okay now the actually memory actual memory gets allocated okay so inside this memory okay it will give it will give uh, what we want as it will store all the instance variables all the variables data okay and the variable name is going to be what this identity is going to be what the variable name that we have given object is the identity identity of this memory block right so variables are stored here okay so this area is called as so we have a name for this area we have we have a separate name for this storage space the name is called the heap area don't worry about this area so okay heap area heap area objects gets created and uh, you know the all the variables will be stored here and this is the reference variable which is object itself same as this if you are giving any other name okay that any other name will be assigned will be will be used here for the reference okay so for data storage is here okay for behaviors how many behaviors are there here this one behavior right this one behavior and this is another behavior two behaviors here yes or no we have two behaviors right for do this methods will be stored this methods will be stored in stack area don't worry about this uh, memory areas okay just understand that that will be stored in stack area objects will be stored in i mean uh, you know the space for the variables will be created in the heap area 
the stack area okay so this is how the stack look like it's just like a bucket it uh, looks just exactly like a bucket okay. inside this okay for all the methods will be stored here what is the first method that we have firstly main method will give preference your main method okay on top of main method uh, we have what we have we have, have sub method and we have we have add method sub and we have add okay for this add method for this sub method okay the reference variable will, variable will be given as object itself i will tell you why this is object right this also so what i try to say is when the object is created for data okay for data it creates an object in the heap area okay for storing the properties okay for storing the behaviors or for, for storing the methods okay it, there is a specific area for the method that is stack area so we have how many areas in the jvm heap area and the stack area heap area is mean for objects as well as for the properties stack area is mean for the methods for now keep this in your mind okay. now only one line okay so after this the control will come outside right control will come outside the main method okay after coming out outside the main method all these things will be destroyed all these things will be destroyed okay, we are not performing any execution because of this because of this line this is what getting happened internally okay are you good till are you good are we good till now everyone okay so let's continue further now i am lit i am doing a little change now what i am doing i am saying see object dot i am calling object dot add i am passing two parameters okay nextly object dot sub I am passing two parameters. What is it? Ten comma ten. A small manipulation I have done. Okay. After this uh, object creation line, so these are the uh, changes. Okay. These are the entries that I have added. One is object dot add. So uh, this object is same as this object. I am using this reference variable. Okay. I am calling the method which is in the name of add. Okay. So now thread will find the main thread will find the method okay that says add okay here is the method it has found forget about white it will usually literally find for the method name method name is add add matching and this is taking two arguments right one is integer itself second one is also an integer integer both are integer type so i'm passing 10 10 so match found so this code will get executed Secondly, 10, 10. Okay. Match phone. Match phone. Right. So this code will be executed. This code will, will get executed. Right. How else I can do like this? Let me remove this too. Let me remove this too. Okay, now let me take this code. Now focus here. We got some, you will get some answer here. Forget about the answer. Let's start understanding the control flow. Then we will discuss about the answer. Same thing, same thing. This is not repetition. Okay, this is just a, uh, just to understand this little modification which I have just done. Okay, focus here. Still, we are, uh, still, we are discussing about this object oriented programming. After completing this, 
we have uh, to we have to discuss about declarative programming so those things are just are just a matter of 5 to 10 minutes okay pay some, pay some attention here okay now you tell me guys we have uh, first we need to understand about compilation after compilation okay uh, compiler will take take care of compilation and jvm will take care of execution this is the compiler thing let me mark it as c ultimately let me mark it as what jvm compiler jvm if it is syntactically correct okay the dot class file will be transferred to jvm okay jvm will create what main thread okay main thread will try to find what main method okay where is the main method here is the main method okay the main thread will get access to the main method okay inside the main method we have only how many instructions are there three instructions are there what does the first instruction says new keyword just identify the new keyword right so it will create an object okay an object will be created okay so we need to consider two memory spaces forgot about this memory spaces we will discuss this in the uh, jvm okay for now just understand that one is heap area second one is stack area okay for this new keyword a memory block will be created in the heap area for this new keyword okay after creating memory block it has to give a name to this memory block okay what jvm will do jvm will try to use this name which we have given here object right so this name will be used as the reference right now so again what jv will jv will do they will jv will try to find what are the properties that is available in this class calculator so this is the class calculator right how many properties are there inside this class calculator so these are the properties that i am talking about a comma b we have integer a equal to 10 integer b equal to integer a equal to 100 integer b equal to 100 okay so only for these properties okay, it will uh, allow or it will uh, save these properties inside this object Okay, these properties will be saved inside this object okay at the same time it has done saving the properties and uh, inside this class we have also what methods behaviors we have right properties are done now behaviors we need to focus on this is the behavior one for all the behaviors except the main method for all the other behaviors okay the uh, stack area will come into the picture the stack area okay. stack area we have how many methods apart from main method this is a main method right and we have add method we have what sub method subtract method So this add method and the sub, subtract method has already been identified with object is identified with what object just for our understanding i am giving this uh, diagram this is how uh, you know you need to, need to understand the flow control flow so properties are done behaviors are done okay so because of this uh, because of this particular line this many things are happening in the memory okay now the counter will be transferred to the next line here what we say object dot add using this object name of ob object reference variable and calling the behavior what behavior you are calling add behavior we are calling right so this is the add add behavior right it will identify the add behavior the control will directly be transferred to what from here okay from here so now we are actually playing with the control usually previously the control was like top to bottom from top to bottom now see this is okay after this 
it will identify the add respect to add method within the same class okay it has been found here the control will be transferred from year to year it means we are indirectly saying the controller to execute this behavior and then come back this line says execute the behavior of add and then come back here itself okay, we are just transferring the control object dot add is nothing but transfer the control to the add method add method is there okay now execute all the lines inside this add method what is the first line itself first line itself is what a plus b system dot outer print line is what a plus b this is the console assume that this is the console okay so this a plus b will be evaluated to what what is the value of a here 100 right so inside here what 100 100 plus 100 right what is the output here 200 right 200 will be displayed in the console after this there are no lines to be executed right this method has done okay this control has completed executing this method because all the instructions inside this method block is completed it has to come back proceed to the next line sub method now the control will be transferred to the sub method this is a sub method execute all the instructions inside the sub method only one instruction is there which is what a minus b what is it a minus b hundred minus hundred right so what does it says it will print it will print what zero in the console yes or no right after this what happens the control will be transferred back there is nothing to be displayed in the console okay this, this gets what uh, you know the job of the main method is completed all the instructions in the main method is done right now after this this memory will be destroyed this memory is uh, created in the ram and that is going to be destroyed after this okay making sense everyone yes or no that's why we got so okay let me run this once again previously okay so we should get what we should get and 200 zero Making sense everyone? Are we good so far? Yes or no? Right? So now you see if you look at this code and if you look at this code now, okay, don't you think don't you think that objects are involved to perform the actual action? Objects are being involved to perform the actual action to uh, kick start the behavior okay you need an object you have to create an object with that object you will start the behavior from the brain okay if you are if the brain says go and eat okay we usually do what we eat right if you are hungry so hungry is a sig hunger is a signal right uh, that that gets fitted inside the brain okay the brain calls what the brain will make us to eat action right it's for the same thing if we are angry what we do we shout right we shout out of control right so likewise okay in the main method okay, all the objects uh, with the help of object we perform the execution of the behaviors and this is happening during the what during the runtime during the runtime, don't you think that all this memory is created during the runtime? All the actual things are happening during the runtime, yes or no? Memory is getting created because when the main thread is coming into the picture, it means it is a runtime, okay? During the runtime, memory is created, actions are performed, okay? Behaviors are executed and memory is getting destroyed. All these things are getting happening during the runtime, execution. This is the phase of execution okay so when i compile this no memory is consumed guys till here till here no memory is actually consumed till here zero memory is consumed okay from here actual from when the jvm is involved okay actual memory is con actual memory is consumed okay 
in the main thread is involved actual memory is consumed all this heap area and the stack area the actions of heap and the stack stack will be done on ram random access memory temporary memory temporary is memory is mean for what during the uh, performing the actions temporarily as long as we witness that okay as now as, as soon as the job is over it has to get destroyed making set what is involved layer object okay for everything object now you tell me okay if i want to uh, again if i want to run this action run this behavior okay can i just say instead of writing these two codes once again okay i can just i can create another object i was telling you extra if you remember or not if you are constructing a house with a with a super super duper plan okay and uh, if the execution is successful if the house is looking very good and you know very fine okay you can sell your plan your plan can be sold to other people uh, who want who are showing interest to construct, construct the same kind of house likewise this is one object with this object i have succeeded you know uh, starting this behaviors or executing this behaviors i can create another object this time now i can say object one okay object one so with this object one i can execute what if i want to execute only add behavior i can execute add behavior if i run this what will be the output you tell me if i run this scope what is output answer me if i run this code what is output if i run this code what is output who is going to answer this okay i am eagerly waiting for your answers don't stay silent okay either answer yes or no or don't know whatever it is i don't see anyone typing here <laughs> Are you getting my question? What could be the answer for? Okay, uh, so what is the answer for this? We know the answer for this. Okay, I want to come. I want to uh, know the complete answer, Shaitanya. Two hundred is correct. Okay, I want to know the complete answer. Two hundred zero two hundred guys. Why are you making? Yeah, this is the complete answer. No, no, no. Why no answer? <laughs> why the answer is no answer itself? It is not. See. This is my this is our code okay so let me go back here objects are created okay so the control from here okay so because of this this these things are happened in the memory okay from here it is going to call what it is going to call add method and the subtract method method calling is happening that's it add method is called so add method is going to return what 200 addition of these two variables subtract method subtracting of this two, two variables and again i have created another object this time i am calling add method again so this is going to return 200 this is going to return 100 100 here okay this is going to return what this is going to return 200 again again, again i am calling the add method right so the same add method will be called this time with a different variable, object one variable, different plan, different. This is different execution. This is different execution. So and two hundred. Sorry, this is zero, guys. Okay? Not hundred. This is zero. Hundred minus hundred zero. And again hundred plus hundred two hundred. Don't you think two hundred zero hundred? Let me run this. Sorry, two hundred zero. Uh, two hundred. Two hundred zero. Two hundred. Two hundred zero zero. Making sense? Okay, now you answer me if you have understood this okay you should also be understanding this i guess object one dot so what is the sequence of answers come on you should answer this very very simple you are uh, your college students okay so very easy now 200 zero 200 zero Good. Good. 
Good. Well, let me do a small manipulation. Okay. Let me remove this. Okay, now let me do something here. Yeah? I'm saying here. Yeah? System dot out dot print LM. Okay. Let me do Java. Now you answer me. Think one thing. Add method is called. Okay. The control will go here. Control will go to the add method. All instructions in the inside the add method needs to get executed. Okay, then the control will come back to the add method itself. Then the cursor will be moved to the next line. The uh, what we call as the main thread will get moved to the next line. And sub method will be called. All the instructions in the sub method will get executed. Right? Okay. So by looking at the way that I have explained, okay, what is the output now? Uh, Java 200 good, good. Java 200 Java 200 Don't you think that we are playing with the control? Yeah, Java 200 So the idea is, the idea is not about the methods, guys. Forget about the method. The idea is about the object orientation. With one object, okay, with this object, I can call the same method over and over again. Don't you think so? I can also do this one. Object dot add. Do you, do you want me to write the new code? New writing the new code is not necessary. By using the same uh, object reference, I keep calling the method over and over again. Yes or no? Now, 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 let me remove this. Okay. Let me add something here. System dot out dot print okay. So if you disconnected, try to rejoin. Okay. Don't assume that the class is over. Try to rejoin. We almost, uh, you know, we are going to exhaust the free time. Okay, now I am saying true. Can anyone tell me the output here? And again, in the add method, no changes are made. In the add method, okay, the, the previous change was actually removed. Uh, keep that in mind and answer me. Let us understand the control flow. Nothing else here. We are just understanding the control flow. 200 zero true 200 zero do you agree with chaitanya everyone good chaitanya everyone do you agree with chaitanya yeah 200 zero 200 zero good good jyoti yes everyone agrees agree no everyone agree with this answer we have not answered Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. We are doing good so far. So far, we are good. Okay. Okay. So the idea is very simple. We are not talking about what? We are just talking about the object oriented future because of this future okay because of this object creation the same behavior can be executed over and over again you do not have to create these behaviors behaviors once again okay just by using this variable name you can access to this behavior with this operator making sense the program has become much reduced right even though it is from top to bottom order from the main method it is from top to bottom order from but we are redirecting the thread redirecting the control to call a specific method so this is where the redirection is happening redirection will happen and again the control will come back here before uh, being moved to the next line redirection will happen it will come here execution will happen here itself next line redirection will happen to the add method come here redirection will happen to the router. so this is called object orientation making sense so it i can also conclude that okay so uh, i can take this example okay. this example is really good but understanding
okay so now this will make more sense now you see guys example now you look at here class is a blueprint on which objects are by using the blueprint we are creating object okay by using the plan we are executing likewise by using the class objects are created okay the class usually has properties behaviors properties are what data behaviors are what methods the classes are going to be created uh, which these classes are when the class when these classes are instantiated Sorry, the objects are going to be created when the classes are instant instantiation is nothing but object creation object creation then you have this is the uh, this is an uh, terminology okay it means object creation okay, i can add one more point here okay the class is virtual and the object is real which means when i uh, when i when i just give this okay when i just uh, slow this show you this program okay this is a kind of a virtual thing okay we just imagine we just do the imagination okay and uh, conclude the, and guess the output okay but objects are real why it is real the when the control is coming here okay it is manipulating the ram memory is getting created in the ram these things are happening in the real time right it is consuming memory it is uh, on top of the memory some operation of some of calculations are performed and it is displaying the values in the console this is happening in the real time okay only with the class imagination after execution uh, with the help of this object it is worth the real time that's why i said uh, my uh, what we where, where was it then miss okay class is with the object is real okay so whenever you build a program just by using class and object this kind of approach is called very simple no right so the, uh, we can conclude what is object oriented programming you can give this definition okay this is for your understanding this program is for your understanding okay. now the next topic is well just to give you a small introduction on this declarative programming Declarative programming. It is one of the programming paradigm which the programmer defines what needs to be done. not how needs to be done okay so let me take the let me take the veg biryani itself okay yesterday i was uh, telling you how to approach to make a veg biryani okay it was simple everyone has followed a different approach approach when there are many number of approaches approach when approach to and so on okay so this is talking about how it needs to be done how it is being done right but when you go to the hotel okay you don't talk about how what you say this is with the uh, this is for us okay when i ask you when i order to prepare biryani i always focus on what how it needs to be done but when you go to hotel when you place an order for vegetable biryani okay do you tell him that uh, do you tell the uh, person like you know while while ordering the biryani you will tell the you, you go to the cash counter you don't tell him right uh, do the biryani like this 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 is my recipe follow this recipe and do do the biryani like this we don't say that actually we we need what we need what what needs to be done not how needs to be done in restaurant what needs to be done biryani get me biryani that's it how you, how you are getting it that is your uh, that is your thing that is your day making sense the difference making sense likewise a declarative program is like it it will always focus about how the things needs to be done not about the what needs to be done sorry uh, what needs to be done not about the how it needs to be done previously till here it was like how it needs to be done not what needs to be done 
it is always talking about how it needs to be done but from here declaring program I always talk about the vice versa guys <laughs> as simple as that right example so uh, you have the concept of databases okay databases are there sql queries are there i am not sure who knows sql queries okay so it is like interacting with the database okay when you interact with the data database okay you always ask for the questions okay you don't ask how it needs to be done you always ask for what questions what questions example select start from customer table this one this is the famous uh, what we call it is famous query uh, sql query select start from customer table it means uh, there should there, there is a table customer table okay it has rows and columns okay it has uh, details of some uh, columns some column names and some rows those these details will be displayed in the console it's talking about what needs to be done okay same thing so in declarative programming the programmer will tell the computer what to do instead of how to do. keep this in mind enough keep this in mind very simple declarative programming what what to do not how to do okay example sql okay so again we know that declarative, declarative programming is again further classified into how many types two types you can also add this functional programming and uh, logical program so long this further classified into two types is what functional programming second one is logical program right so so far the discussion is we have just concluded this okay this is also concluded okay tomorrow i will be con concluding what is a functional programming and what is a logical programming okay after completing this i will start the pillars of hoops okay we have a concept like inheritance abstraction and uh, polymorphism and uh, encapsulation okay and uh, we have uh, and again i will give you the brief idea about classes okay one is objects okay and the seventh one is we have message passing okay, with this uh, the 50 percent of the java will be completed right so i will plan to take uh,